Uh, once again, I want to welcome you to my program and uh, for those of you that responded to the last uh, message, indeed, it's appreciated. And one thing I want you to understand in this teaching that I'm giving you is that I want you to also share it with your friends, you know, share it in your WhatsApp group, in your Facebook group and all that. The reason why, because uh, Jesus says we should go into the world and preach the gospel. and the best way to actually do that these days, I realize, is about sharing, you know. When you hear the word like this and it touches you, it changes your life, you put it out there, let people hear. And when you do that, you are actually sharing the gospel. In other words, you are fulfilling the mission of the gospel. So let's do this together. Subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and uh, put our bell in so we can give you a notification whenever we publish any new video. And now, above all, share, because when you share, you're actually joining in sharing the gospel to the world. So you might not be able to go out there to Jericho to start sharing tracks, but you are able to reach out through your social media. And today, I want to look at a very interesting topic in terms of uh, uh, growth. Uh, we all desire in life to grow, and uh, when, whatever we do, we want to grow. And that's why even when a child is born, is born very little before you know he's grown, big is a man and God married has children. So there, God is progressive and that's the reason why you see when God created the earth in the book of Genesis chapter 1 after all the creation he, he, he put knowledge in man and man was progressive because God is progressive and we have seen since the time of Adam how the world has progressed to what it is today and in the time of Adam there was no electricity but because the 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 the, 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 the knowledge that that man god has embedded in man which is the knowledge of god remember that god created man in his own image so he actually transposed a lot of those knowledge upon man and man that's why you can do all these things we do in inventions we come up with all sorts of things because we have the nature of god and because god is creative and god is progressive we also we need to be progressive in life. So our life needs to be progressive. But I now understand the secret of progression depends on one simple, simple basic things, simple basic rules of life. And when God said, be fruitful and multiply, for you to be fruitful and multiply, there has to be a principle that must be followed. For you to become in abundance there is a principle that must be followed and that principle is what i want to be looking into today in john chapter 15 verse 2 jesus was talking he said was talking about pruning to trim and a lot of you gardeners who love to garden some of you who are farmers you know exactly what i'm talking about uh, the importance of pruning and when I was looking at the scripture, I was looking at this message when Jesus was talking about it. It becomes quite interesting to me because I did experiment with a lemon tree at the back of my house. And I began to see the change and the difference. For us to be progressive in this world, the principle of God or nature has to be followed. And one of those principles is that when you plant a tree or you plant whatever fruit, a vine or whatever on the ground, first and first it springs up, then you come up with a lot of branches. And when the owner sees that, you continue to water it, you continue to, to put all the manures and everything, tender to it to make sure that it grows to what it ought to be. And when this tree is growing, it grows with a lot of branches all over the place, good leaves and all those stuff. But now, the time comes when it's supposed to start producing fruit. Now, if you don't tend that, for instance, the trees by trimming out or pruning the certain branches off, you want to leave it to just grow wide, it's most likely that you will not get the type of fruit you're looking for from that tree. 
Why? Because the energy is dispensed to every branch, every leaves of the tree. So in the process, it's most likely you're going to get very worthless fruit from that tree. Because the energy comes from the root and spread into the branch and into everything. That's why Jesus said, I am the true vine. In John chapter 15 verse 2. He is the true vine. And any branch that does not produce fruit, he said the Father will cut it off and burn it in the fire. What is Jesus talking about there? Simple. Jesus, he is saying, I am the root of your being. Or I am the root of your Christianity. I am the root of your faith. And I am the root of your belief in God. So, you look at it this way like a tree planted. For that tree to survive, to bring good fruit and blossom in each season, the tree on the ground has to, I mean, the, the, the roots has to be firm. The root has to provide good nutrients to the branches. If not, the branches is not going to produce anything. So when you come to Christ, first and foremost, you are now a branch in him. Remember, he is the root. He is the beginning and the end of the church. He is the beginning and the end of Christianity. He is the beginning and the end of all things. So, him being the root in which the foundation of Christianity is built, of the foundation of life is built, there is no other way we can build outside of that foundation. If we do that, we're not even going to survive anything. That's the reason why you say that when he was talking to his disciples, he said, you cannot do without me. If you try to operate outside of me, you are going to die because you are not feeding off me. Because I am the beginning, I am the end of all that you believe in, in this Christian work. So first and foremost, Christ, he is the one we anchor on, like I said in my last message. So we come to him, we believe in him, we confess him as our Lord and Savior. Then he engrafts us in as the branch of himself. Now we need to feed off him if we want to have life. And we are not just talking of life eternal. We are talking of abundant life here on earth before we even go to join him in glory. So it's important for us to know this fact that first, being in Christ, we are now engrafted into the branch and our life source comes from him. So we need to establish that. Him being the root and the vine and we the branches, if we want, if we don't know how to let the nutrients that we need to grow and progress in life come from him, we are going to fall apart very quickly. So quickly, I'm going to look at a few points for us to stay and stick with him on this journey. Because Christianity is not an easy work, like I said previously. But if you know how to work it, it's a whole lot easier. Especially when you work, when you work as the branch that is attached to a vine. If you have that at the back of your mind, that your resources, your sources come from the master himself, then faith comes to work. All those things begin to go to work. So quickly, I want to look at the things that is making us not to be productive. Very quick point, I'll bring it out. Number one, if we are not productive in Christ and we need to see, or we're not progressive, in other words, we are not feeding off the vine from the vine, we need to look into what are the toxic things that is affecting our life that is making us not to get that full nourishment from him. Number one, family. Family can be very toxic sometimes, you know. We get so consumed by family 
when I mean family, I mean in its, in its entirety. It could be a nucleus family, extended family, and all that. We get so caught up with this family of a thing, it becomes a distraction for us to walk with the vine that supply us the need that we need to grow. So, it becomes a very critical thing we need to consider as we walk with Christ. What am I saying? I say, man, saying we shouldn't have family or we should forsake family or we shouldn't work with. No. The point is that, remember, God said He has to be forced in everything, He must be forced in our life. Either He's forced or He's last. And when we bring God into a secondary position, then we are not in the vine. Certainly, nothing is going to go right. So we must understand that, that first and foremost, the family, the way we're connected, whereby if our lives, our belief system, our connection with our family is greater than our connection with Christ, who is the vine, then our productivity is going to be either low or almost nothing, or next to nothing, or absolute nothing. Two, friends. Having friends is good. But you know who is your friends when days are dark? Friends become quite few. You look at your life, your life is surrounded by, surrounded by friends and people around you, you have come to hold a high esteem, good. But remember again, anything that is higher esteem than that of God, which is in you or Christ in you, that is not going to help you. It's not going to take you forward. It's not going to make you produce the fruit that the scripture said we should produce, which is the fruit of righteousness. So for us to produce the fruit of righteousness, there are so many things we have to let go in our lives. And that's the reason why you look at Jesus during his time in ministry. One thing was so obvious. When he grew up, he started his ministry. Eventually, he more or less literally disconnected himself from his family. We never really saw him, he went back to where he was raised. In fact, when, we, when he did that first miracle, when they said, ah, when the mother was telling him, no, do this and that, 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 he was telling him, no, don't tell me what to do because my time is not come. And the other time when they were in the temple, when they were looking for him and all that, he said, no, why are you people looking for me? Don't you know that my time has come to do the work of my father? They didn't even understand him. What he simply was telling him is that, look, here I am to do the work of he that sent me. So he comes first. Everything else is secondary. Wife, husband, family, children, extended family, everything is secondary. First is my father's business. After that, we deal with the rest. Friends, same thing. When they are in a position whereby they become a distraction to our work with the Lord, and is not allowing us to yield the type of fruit the scripture speaks about, then we are not committed to the vine. So we are not going to bear the type of fruit that is expected of us. Number three, sometimes we get too overambitious. We want to rule the world. We want to have everything in the world. We work so hard. We do everything we are taught. We just... And God becomes secondary. And when that happens, we are not feeding from the vine. He is not in charge. We are in charge of our own destiny. Number four, being pruned, for us to be trimmed, to be pruned, if you watch the farmers and the gardeners, it involves a whole lot of things in this world, which include trials and tribulation. In fact, the pruning of a man, remember as humans, we don't grow branches like trees and all that stuff. But our characters is molded and shaped based on the word of God. That's where we get pruned. I remember I give you a story here. I've got this lemon tree at the back of my house. When I bought the house a couple of years ago, uh, we didn't quite pay attention to the lemon tree. We just let it go. And this lemon tree was just growing. And when it grows every year, it produces fruit. But the fruit was not worthy of eating. 
because you will see it's black here, there's incest, bite here, there's this. It was just a complete mess. We just couldn't use it. So every egg gets rotten, gets rotten. Then in the past three years, I, I, I began to actually pay attention to this lemon tree. Before it produces, the exact time of the year, it just bloom with green leaves all over, branches all over the place. One day I took a pruner and I went and I began to, my wife, she loves to garden a lot, so she does some marvelous things, which I'll be putting on the video sometimes. I began to trim the trees out, begin to trim out a lot of branches and left very few on top of it after I trimmed it. And I remember she said, ah, no, you just, just cut down everything. You do that, that, that. I said, no, you relax. Let me do my own way. You do your garden. Let me do this. And, that. and believe you me, that first year, for the first time, the lemon produced unbelievable big seeds that we could not. In fact, it lasted out for a very long time. I remember we had to, to carry a whole bucket of beautiful quality lemon for the first time to the church. And trust you me, every year now I prune the tree. I just trim it, prune it nicely, cut out those branches, remove those leaves. That's not necessary. And I just did it about two weeks ago now. And if you see the lemon, they're growing bigger, they're looking fresher, and they're looking wonderful. And I began to see, I said, okay, this is what Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 2. I am the vine, ye are the branches. If you don't take your source resources from me, you are going to die or you're going to produce a worthy fruit. And it, it astounded me because now every year we produce beautiful lemon from that tree. Everybody won that. Oh, wow. And all that. I even put, I put it on my Facebook page and all that. And people won. Wow, what a good harvest. And they come in abundance. So there is gain when you stick around, when you allow yourself to be pruned by the Lord. And Pruning, number five, pruning is seasonal. You don't prune every time of the year or you just, there is a season that is time for pruning. And when that time comes, you must pay attention to it. Because if you don't, you mix this, the next season's harvest. And that's the reason why we must continue to plug onto Christ. Because he's the one that prunes us. He knows what we're going through. He knows how to chop this out, chop that out until he creates and rebuilds that character that he wants us to be in him. The people begin to see that character and begin to see you differently and say, no, this person is different from other Christians that I know. Why? Because he's constantly working on you. Though we work with physical tree on season, but Christ can be working on you on a regular basis because our lives, as much as is compared to that of a tree but we have a mind a thinking mind and a brain that function that's what makes us different with a tree tree produces in each season but we we are constantly in season and out of season we are constantly it's a constant work so christ's work also in us is a constant thing it's not a stagnant thing that we wait the autumn or we wait the winter to be able to produce or harvest there is that dry moment, of course, when we have to ask for grace to carry through that dry moment. But also there's that moment whereby Christ, we have to be pruned to be able to produce the type of fruit that he wants to present to his father that this is my child. He wants to use you to show up to the world. You see that smart, like he did to Job. He called Satan came to the court having a dialogue and God told him, have you seen my servant there, Job? What do you think of him? That was God making a boast of his own. Sometimes God wants to use us to show off. Sometimes God wants to use us to boast to the world, to boast to show to people. And say, have you seen him? Have you seen her? That's my child out there. And that can only come when we allow him to prune us when he needs you. Like I said, that's why I don't believe trials and tribulation is of the devil. Because a lot of preachers, they are so quick to attribute trials and tribulation to the devil saying that uh, the devil he he did this he did that he did this he did that that's how our lives is like that 
And you never know. If it is God using it to show off to your enemy so that you can see how firm and how steadfast you are with him. But preachers are quick to judge you and condemn you that you are where you are because of your iniquity. And Paul says something, say we should rejoice when we go through trials and tribulation because when we come out of it, we become a better person. So, for me, trials and trouble that comes around us every now and then, for me, it's a test of time of building up our most holy faith in him to make us become a better person. And that's our pruning. Now, pruning, the next thing I want to look into is when you are pruning a tree, it's not a very, it's not a beautiful thing because you don't know which branch you're cutting off that is going to produce more or whatever. So what you do, you have to be careful how you select which branch you cut off, whatever. But now, here's the difference. Christ, he created us. He knows us in and out. He knows what we're capable, capable of doing and what we are not capable of doing. So what does he do? He can prune us better than we can prune. I mean, I can prune my lemon tree at the back of my house. So when he prunes us, he pays attention to what he does. But oftentimes, it's not a very comfortable thing. And that's where we react. We don't want to let him do his work in our lives. So what do we do? We prolong what he wants to do. And the trial and the trouble gets longer. But if we could learn to submit to him in all wholeness and let him take charge, it might be a whole lot easier for us to walk through. Now, if you look at the consequences, for instance, if I look at that lemon tree, if I decide not to trim the following year, or I'm too busy, I get caught up, I'm away, I'm not able to trim it when I ought to do it, what do you think I'm going to get in the following year? I will get, again, useless fruit. There will be more leaves like that fig tree that was so beautiful and yet produced nothing. That would be the consequences. So the consequences of not allowing the Lord to prune us is number one. You stand in danger of being cut off from him. Because in John chapter 15 verse 1, I mean verse 1 and 2 where we take our, our, our teaching from. He said, I'm the vine, here, the branches. Any, any branch that produces not fruit, my father will cut it off. In other words, he's able to remove you because you are of no use. Just like when I prune my lemon tree, I look out for those branches that is not worthy of producing fruit, I cut it off. So you stand the danger of being cut off from the main vine, which is Christ himself. In other words, you can cut here. You can go to church on Sunday. You can be the highest tight payer. You can be the what the bishop recognized and all that. But because you have not allowed him to prune you to produce the fruit that you need, you are not in him. And he has no part in you because you refuse to stay in the vine that produces the resources that you need to grow and to stand firm. Two, being cut off means you're dead. There's no life in you. People can see you so what a wonderful Christian, what a wonderful brother, what a wonderful sister. They give you all the praise and all the glory that you think you deserve. But the fact is that in him you have no recognition. He doesn't recognize you. He doesn't know who you are. You know, when Jesus was one of his disciples, he said, you know, on that day, many will say, oh, Lord, in your name we did this. In your name we did that. In your name we did it. He said, and I said, depart from me, ye workers of what iniquity. Those are Christians he's talking to. He wasn't talking to unbelievers. He was talking to Christians. Because remember, the judgment of the Lord will begin in his household. So, once you are off, you are cut off, you have no life in you. You might just be hanging in there thinking you are still in Christ. You are working with Christ. You are actually dead. Number three. There is also the danger of eternal death. Remember we die here. One. We live. We get into eternity. Where life really begins. And eternity is where the real life that has no ending begins. And there you die and you die into the hell fire which he said is reserved for the wicked 
And not because you didn't know the truth, but just because you refused to be pruned, you refused to allow him to work on you and trimmed you up so that he can produce much more better fruit. So you become an obstacle to your own self. You don't surrender. You don't walk with him. You read the scripture. You go to church. But your lifestyle, your behavior, your attitude towards the things of the gospel is totally opposite of what you subscribe to. To what you read every day. To what the preacher is preaching. Contrary. And Christ said, you don't have part in me. I caught you off. So, and preacher, they will sometimes it, it, it becomes so obvious when you are actually falling out of grace or you have been removed from the vine, probably start going through all sorts of trouble. And preacher, they will pick on that. You, you, you hear sometimes the preacher, they will say, oh, probably it's the cause of your parents. You need to be delivered from these causes. Oh, da, 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 da. And the question I always ask is that. The Bible says when we are in Christ, or when we come into Christ, we are a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, if you are telling me that God is judging me based on what my father or my grandfather did, my ancestors, whom some of them don't even know, how, how, how can we relate that to where God said in the scripture that uh, I will no longer hold you against the sins of your father, neither will I hold the sins of your father against you. Then how do we interpret the scripture we normally quote, when you are in Christ, you are now a new creature. If, my now a new, if I am now a new creature, why is the old coming in and again? That suddenly the cause of my father, I'm not carrying the cause of, when I don't even know what my father did, I don't know what my, my parents, my grandparents did to any who, whoever there. And God is not punishing me for that. You see, God is not unjust. He's not unjust at all. In fact, he's very impartial when it comes to judgment. He's the only rightful ruler that you can get right judgment from. So, don't let anybody deceive you. Sometimes it's God that is pruning you to make you be a better person. And people want to put you down, want to point the finger to you to tell you it's because of your life, because of Look at where you are. You are suffering God of your sin. You are doing this. this, this. You know, if God was to punish us the way we commit, the way we judge other people, I don't think anyone would be alive to this day. Because we are quick to throw out judgment there. Oh, this, you, you are like this because whatever. If not, you pay your tithe. God is not hearing you. You come to church. He's not listening to you. You, you, are, you love people. He's not listening. They say all sorts of things about you. That's not so. God is working something in you which nobody else may see except you. And you need to be consistent in working that work with him. Don't let people judge you and place the curse of your forefather that you don't know upon your head. Don't be a part of that. Because God will judge you according to your work with him, not according to what your mom did or your father did. All you do is to work with the Lord. And he will judge you accordingly. So don't let anybody place any curse on you or let anybody place, and then say ancestral curse, you're going through deliverance for all sorts of my friend. Certain things is just the principle of God that is trying to make you to walk in. But sometimes we're taking this gospel and twist it around and judge people with it, make them feel is their wrong doing that makes their life. Forgetting that God is actually the one pruning you. When I prune the tree, I don't think the tree feels comfortable. Because when you cut off the branch, you throw it, and a few days later, it's dead. Same thing when God purges us or he prunes us, he's taking out those little, little things that become obstacles. You know, the little things that spoil, he said, a little leaven, leavening the whole lumps. Those little things that spoil the vine, God is removing them. So that what? They can produce better fruit. So let's not be too quick in the way we read God's actions to our life, character, and behavior. I'm not saying we shouldn't live righteously. We must live righteously. In fact, we work to live righteously. But let's not carry what God has not placed upon our head and walk with it and say God has cost us or this and that. God is not unjust. If people were to be cursed, we would have seen the people of the world being cursed and being destroyed 
who are more wickedly than anybody else. Whom the Son of Man has set free, he is forever free indeed. Now, that brings me to what? To be productive. Like I said, after pruning the lemon tree, I get better harvest by the end of the year. When you allow the Lord to prune you the way he wants to prune you, you become much more productive in your life. And for you to be productive, productive, we need to do these following things. Number one, we have to put God first in everything that we do. Because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the beginning and the end of it all. So, God first. Christ first. Nothing else should replace him. Nothing. Not family, not friends, not church, not bishop, not wife, not husband, not children, not society, not government, not a political affiliation should take his place. He must be first and foremost in everything that we do. Number two, don't forget that you are a servant. A servant is subject to his master. So when you always have at the back of your mind that you are a servant, then you will obey the authority of your master. Then your master will be able to take you through the right process to make you be a better person so that you can serve him better. Number three, the Holy Spirit you must be in partnership with him. Because you cannot walk with God without the help of the Holy Spirit. When you try to do it on your own, like some of us want to be very mechanical and think the more church we go, the more God will hear us, the more we pray and shout from the mountain, the more God will listen to us, the more we fast and pray for 30, 45 days, 70 days, the more God will hear us. And year in, year out, nothing happens. If the Holy Spirit is not in partnership with you. You must learn to partnership with the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible said he is the one that will teach us all things and bring us into remembrance the things we have even forgotten. So it's important that the Holy Spirit must be your current and present partner to lead you in line with Christ Jesus. Number four, live your life for the kingdom. Don't live your life for your friends and your family and society. Don't let people... People want to t- how wonderful you are and all that. And as soon as you die, they mourn you for one day or half a day. They've forgotten about you. But you are there in eternity with your master. Live your life for the kingdom. When I mean kingdom, I don't mean by building church or helping people to build their church and their temple. I'm talking of the kingdom of God coming into you and you living your life for that. Not the church you go to. Be a kingdom-minded person. In other words, being a Christ-minded person. Because oftentimes we get so committed with church, we're helping people build their own kingdom here on earth, and we have no record of this in heaven. You know, what is going to be so sad is, on the last day when we shall meet with Christ, when a lot of people shall be giving their report card, they realize that there is nothing. And all their effort, the tithes, the offering, everything they gave, their time, there's no record. In the presence of God. That would be the saddest moment of a lot of Christians. Why? Because they were busy building the kingdom of another man and they forgot that they are supposed to what? Build the kingdom of God. Jesus told his disciple, pray when you pray, ask, let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. A father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Number five, you need to feed off him as the main tree. For, don't forget, he is the vine, you are the branches. So you need to constantly feed off him. Because if you don't do that, your nourishment is not going to come from anywhere. You're going to die. Six, good fruits are pro- consumed by others. Not necessarily the tree that produces it. So people will see you and see your character. And they will feed off you. That's what makes a good tree. The tree does not really consume itself what it produces, but people feed off the produce of that tree. So it's important that you produce what? Good fruits. So that people can feed off 
you from what like I'm sharing with you today. And people see that they will be challenged by your influence, by your character, and you'll shine like a light unto others to light up the way for other people. Number seven, pruning is done through our conscience and our conviction. Every day, the Holy Spirit walks through us. He speaks to us through our conscience and through our what? Our conviction. You drop a word inside of. We read the word of God, it becomes light unto us. We hear the word of God, it becomes light unto us. Some become conviction that need to take out certain things that is allowing all the fruit to blossom. So, we need to get, when we get pruned, it has to be done through our conscience. Because we are not a stagnant tree. We are a tree that is progressive. So it comes with, open up your conscience. Let the Holy Spirit walk with you. When the Holy Spirit tells you something, do it. He will lead you onto light. He will never lead you astray. Number eight, do not resist God because He knows you better. Don't resist Him. He knows the, He knows. What nutrient you need? When you don't eat well, what do you do? You go to a dietitian. They tell you eat this, eat this, eat this, eat that. Then you will be healthier. Exercise this, exercise like that, so that you will be a better, healthier person. Why do we do that? Because we want to live good. We want to have, want to live longer. God, He is the one that knows you better. He knows the spiritual nutrient that you need. Who is able to put those things inside of you? But you must not resist him when you are going through those issues, difficult times of life and all that. Let him have it. Let him have his way. So that he can prune you, take out those branches, those things that is making you not to move forward, that is making you not to be productive, let him take them out of you. And connect himself with you. And through that he will radiate himself through you to the world. And the world will see you as a light. And you become attractive to the world. And they will want to have what you don't have. That's what makes us Christian. That's what makes us Christ followers. And that's why we are called the blessed one in Christ. So beloved, whatever you're going through right now, don't judge yourself on a negative note. It might just be God walking one last thing in your life. Let him have his way. And when the enemy is coming against you even like a flood, remember, he you knows how to take care of that. So don't give up. Don't walk away. Don't live in false hope. Trust him. Believe him. And let him have his way when you go through this time of chopping down, re-amending, pushing together, organizing and all that. Let him have his way. Because when he finished with you, I guarantee you that you're not going to be the same again. I'm hoping that you were blessed with this word. If you were blessed, like I said, please give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe. There's more messages coming your way. Thank you so much for watching and uh, let's keep praying and let's look forward to the coming of our Lord. God bless you. Bye-bye.